Well, welcome to Requirement 5 for the Engineering Merit Badge. This is Tim Brown with the National Advanced Driving Simulator, University of Iowa here again with you today. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how the engineering approach works. And so, at the end of the day, you're going to have a better understanding of what that process is, and you're going to have a chance to use it uh, for one of two opportunities that we'll talk about when we get to the tail end of this. But first off, we're going to cover that process. Um, and since we all like to start off with, with amusing aspects of things, um, this is one of my favorite uh, presentations on the engineering process. Um, and then, you know, it starts off here with, does it move? Uh, if the answer is no, then we, we ask, should it? If the answer to that is no, then we, we're, we're all good. Um, if it should move, then, you know, we're going to apply some WD-40 and that should solve our problem. Um, the other aspect of things is if it, if it does move, um, again, if it should move, we're in good shape. Um, if it doesn't, duct tape will generally solve that problem. Um, and there's a couple of interesting things about this, one of which is, is the whole aspect of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And the other aspect of it is uh, duct tape or WD-40 will solve almost any problem. And so it's just a matter of identifying which problem you've got. And so um, I find that one a little bit amusing uh, and I like to share it wherever I can. So that was my opportunity to, to add it in someplace where it makes sense. And so uh, when we talk about engineering problem solving, we're going to take a little bit of work here from the engineering fundamentals and problem solving by uh, Eddie Jensen Northrup and Mickelson from 2012. And so they define engineering problem solving as recognizing and understanding the problem, accumulate data and verify the accuracy, select an appropriate theory or principle, uh, make necessary assumptions, solve the problem, verify and check the results. And so that's, that's how they kind of tackle it. Um, when we think about that more visually, um, I like to think of it as a cycle. Uh, first op opportunity is to state the problem. So we're going to join there in the top left of the circle. Uh, and, and this is kind of the systems approach to this. Um, and so we state the problem, we investigate alter alternatives. Uh, those, are, those are based on our engineering expertise and, and theories that we've learned from science. Uh, we're then going to model the system. Uh, we're going to integrate, we're going to launch that system, assess its performance, reevaluate. And this kind of goes in an endless loop until we've solved the problem. Uh, and oftentimes it may go beyond that. And so if we think about the life cycle of a product, it may solve a problem initially, but then we may need to tweak it later because we identify a problem that we didn't anticipate. And so um, this kind of becomes an endless loop. And we're going to kind of walk through the steps of this engineering process here. So we're going to dig a little bit deeper into that engineering systems process. And so, as we talked about earlier, stating the problem is kind of the first and most important step in the task. It requires you to identify customers, understand their needs, and establish what needs to change from the current state. Uh, this allows you to identify requirements and define system functionality that you need. So um, you want to take your time on this step. Uh, because if you get this one wrong, uh, you're going to wind up a solution that doesn't meet the needs of your customer, uh, whoever that might be. Uh, the next step is you're going to investigate alternatives. So you're going to identify and investigate potential solutions. Again, you're going to dig into theory and best practices here uh, to figure out what some options are. Um, we talked earlier about how this is uh, important to be analytical. Uh, but you also don't want to reject uh, novel solutions at this point in time because they may, they may wind up being the best solution and, and may provide the, the biggest uh, jump in terms of creating a solution that, that far surpasses other ones. And so there's that delicate balance of kind of the incremental improvement versus uh, a rapid change. And so you're going to want to consider both of those options here in uh, your evaluation of alternatives. And you're going to want to look at performance, cost, and risk. And so risk really comes in there. So incremental changes will generally be less risky, uh, but they also have uh, uh, maybe less likely to produce the result that you need. And so you've got to balance those in there. 
Uh, I think the other thing to keep in mind is that not all factors are equally weighted. And so, um, you know, in some situations uh, where you absolutely have to have the system work right, cost may be less of a factor. Uh, if you're in an industry where cost is a, an important consideration in terms of being able to control market share, um, performance may be less important than, than keeping the cost down. And so you've got to balance those items out. Um, the next step in this process is modeling the system. These can be either physical or virtual models uh, used to clarify the requirements, identify challenges and opportunities for system development. Uh, ultimately, uh, you may be inclined to skip over this step, but they can reduce development costs and identify inefficiencies um, that you might, might otherwise not catch. And so you really want to go through this step, even though sometimes it might be nice uh, to, to skip over it. Uh, even if they're rudimentary uh, models, uh, just to see how it's going to work and I eliminate the possibility of uh, spending a lot of time exploring an option that isn't really feasible uh, once you dig into it. Uh, the next step is to integrate. The, this focuses on the big picture of integrating all system components and interfaces together. Um, you want to optimize the overall system development rather than each of the individual components. I think that's one of the things we often struggle with is I might have a piece of a project and somebody else might have another and we both are off working to optimize ours individually but when we put them together we have a our, we have an interface or a system that doesn't work efficiently together and so uh, we want to keep that in mind um, and, and, and work through that coordination effort uh, because at the end of the day um, if we develop a system and you know, it all doesn't come together, uh, that's a problem. Um, you know, the as a baseball fan, uh, one of the ways I like to think about this is, uh, you know, if, if I took a baseball team and I, I put the nine best baseball players uh, in the league out there in terms of batting average, um, I might wind up with without a pitcher. Uh, and so I might be able to score lots of runs, uh, but I can't get anybody out. Um, you know, it's like that's something to think about as you go through this. And so, you know, there's different roles that pieces have to play and they've got to be balanced out and they have to work together. Uh, the next step is to launch the system. This is where the system operates. Initial runs might be limited uh, to test the system. And so as we think about this, um, this launch might not be a full scale launch, but it, it might be a, a prototype that goes out for use uh, for beta testing. Um, those are some of the things we need to we need to look at and try to balance out as we go through. And so the next thing we're going to want to do is assess the performance. And so we're going to identify some metrics in advance uh, that define what's important from a performance standpoint. And we're going to set some criteria up to in terms of what is an acceptable solution. Um, we need to measure what's important. So we need to define these criteria in a way that 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 makes sense. And so, you know, if I'm designing an engineering process to manufacture widgets and I need to manufacture a thousand widgets per hour um, with a with a defect rate of less than one percent, then those might be the two uh, things I'm going to measure is, is the, the, the process rate and the defect rate. And then I'm going to measure those and compare them to the thresholds that I've identified. Um, so we once we go through that, that will give us an idea of how we're doing. And so at that point in time, we get to reevaluation. So we look at how we're doing uh, relative to that. So going back to the example with widgets that we're manufacturing, uh, you know, let's say that we've got a process flow uh, where we're manufacturing widgets and we can get 1,700 done per hour, but my defect rate is at 5%. I'm going to then my new problem is that I've got too many defects and so I'm going to look at options for how to do a revision to the process that reduces the number of defects. And so I may trade off speed of going through the process to get a lower defect rate. And so those are things we're going to look at here and we're going to repeat the process until we meet the, the criteria that we've established for the process. So now that we've kind of talked about what this process looks like, you're going to have 
two options for completing this requirement. And both of these would have to be done on your own. And so we want to clarify that these are two options. You only have to do one of these. And so the first option would be to develop a step-by-step -step plan for your next camp out. Or the second option would be to, to develop an original design for pieces of patrol equipment, for a piece of patrol equipment. And so we're going to walk through these and talk about what you would need to do for each. And so if you choose to do a camp out plan, you're going to use the engineering approach to plan your camp out. You're going to start by defining the problem. Um, and in this case, that might be looking at back and saying, what needs improvement from the last camp out? And, you know, as we look at new scouts joining troops uh, at different parts of the year, uh, or scouts trying to, to make the next advancement uh, before our next court of honor, what rank advancements work needs to be completed at the camp out. So you know, those are things we often look at when we're planning our camp outs, but that might be defining your problem in that regard. Uh, next up, you're going to list alternative ideas, uh, including program schedule, campsites, transportation, and costs. And so you're going to try and balance those things out. And so as we look at, uh, once we define the problem, we're going to then dig into it and identify some options for how to, how to lay this out. So you're going to follow the, the engineering approach to, to work through that and come up with a camp out plan. And ultimately what you're going to do is you're going to document some of the alternatives you considered and you're going to then document uh, what that final plan for your camp out looks like uh, and, and why you made the choices you did. And so that's what you would document under 5A in the workbook. Again, if you choose that one, you're only going to have to do the camp out plan for an upcoming camp out. You're going to walk through what those decisions are. And if you need more space than what you've got available there, uh, feel free to, to add a a blank sheet of paper and add some extra detail in there. Um, but you know, this is a, this is a relatively straightforward one. Uh, and any of you that have served in the role of a patrol leader or a senior patrol leader, assistant senior patrol leader, uh, probably have had to do this at one point or the other in terms of going through this camp out pro planning process. And we're just asking you to go through it and take a different look at it in terms of approaching it from an engineering process standpoint. If you don't choose to do that one, the other option you've got is to make an original design of a piece of patrol equipment. Um, and so, again, here you're going to start by defining a problem uh, it should solve and the requirements for that. And so we can look at, you know, for those of you who have earned the uh, Pioneering Merit Badge, you may have had to to do some lashings to put together a, a, a project uh, and create a useful gadget or uh, or even some very simple things from useful camp gadgets that you had to develop uh, from a lashing standpoint as part of your rank advancement. In this case, what we're looking at is you, is you to pick out a, a bigger uh, challenge uh, and, and, and not necessarily focusing on lashings, but a piece of equipment that you can use, whether it's a patrol box uh, or it's a patrol ch chair or some piece of equipment that you could use on your camp out. What you really want to look at is what problems do we have as a patrol and what piece of equipment might solve that problem. Um, and so that's what you're going to kind of work your way through is, is to identify that what that problem is that your patrol has faced and then how could I design a piece of equipment that's going to solve that problem. Um, once you've done that, you're going to follow through the process. You're going to draw, and, and ultimately, you're going to draw plans for that piece of equipment. You're going to explain why it was designed the way it was and how you would make it work. And so, those are the challenges that you've got if you go through this. Um, you know, this this may be a little bit more challenge for some of you, uh, but for those of you who really are interested in the engineering design aspect of things and, and the more physical aspects of things. Uh, this is a good opportunity to put those skills to work uh, and, and kind of explore how you can develop a piece of equipment. And maybe even, although it's not a requirement of this merit badge, you can actually build it uh, for your patrol um, and, and continue using the engineering process to, to work off the prototype that you develop and, and, uh, and, and make something that will truly improve the ability of your patrol to, to do its work.
Um, again, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to document either 5A or 5B in the workbook, uh, and you only have to do one of them. Uh, thank you for joining us today as we talked about the engineering process, and I kind of laid out what you need to do to complete either 5A or 5B. I look forward to chatting with you as we dig into requirement six next time.